Good evening, everyone. I would like to call to order the Whatcom County Council meeting for February 11th, 2020. Uh, please call the roll. Red Brown. Here. Sorry, here. Barry Buchanan. Here. Tyler Bird. Present. Todd Donovan. Present. Ben Ellenboss. Here. Carol Frazee. Here. Kathy Kirshner. Here. Thank you. Uh, please rise and join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A couple of quick announcements. Um, <clears throat> If you have your cell phone with you, please either turn it off or put it on vibrate. Uh, and if you'll be handing out any paperwork to the council, please make sure our staff gets a copy. And I do have one other announcement, uh, primarily for the council, but this is a public meeting. We are having our retreat next Tuesday at 1.15. That's the 18th, and it's in the conference room, right? In the council conference room. So hope to see everybody there. Minutes. I would entertain a motion to approve five sets of minutes. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, corrections, or deletions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Passes unanimously. Next is the open session. The open session, audience members can speak to the council on any, uh, any <coughs> issue not scheduled for a public hearing. We have no public hearings tonight, so... Uh, you don't have that to worry about. Each speaker should state his or her name uh, for the record and optionally provide your city of residence. Uh, speakers will be given three minutes to address the council. Council staff will keep track of time and they'll inform speakers when they have 30 seconds left to conclude their comments and then they will call time. Also, when you're at the podium, please speak directly into the microphone so we all can hear you. So at this time, I would open the public session. My name is Joy Gilfillan. I'm president of the Restorative Community Coalition, and I want to thank you this afternoon for allowing the public to actually have a conversation with the council in one of the public hearings that was fresh and that was welcomed. And I think it made a big difference, and I'd like to thank you all also before I get into the jail contract part. I want to thank you. This afternoon you added nine new positions to the Stakeholders Advisory Commission. That or committee, and I think that's probably the single time I've ever witnessed in all the years that I've been coming before the council and advocating on various task forces. I've been doing this for 10 years all the time. You guys just listened to the people and allowed the users of the system and criminal justice advocates to be seated on that committee. And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm just deeply grateful because that's what we have been asking for for 10 years someone to actually listen to the users of the system, and you just did it, so thank you. Thank you to each one of you who voted for it, and those who didn't, I'd like you to consider allowing it to get even more voices from the users heard, because we are not opposed to fixing the jail problems. We are not opposed to doing anything that needs to be done for the betterment of our citizens. We're just, I have been studying every single task force that has come before the council for the last since 1998, I've looked them all up. I know who's on them. It's almost always loaded with government officials who are paid by the government taxpayers, by our taxpayers, or it's loaded with nonprofits who are also paid by the taxpayers one way or another, but oftentimes through government employment contracts. So the users of the system and us citizens who have to actually make original money and pay original bills and pay our taxes are often not heard. So thank you very much this afternoon for making that change. It actually affected my position on supporting the hiring of, the, of the j these jail building contractors. And I listened to them and I got to, because of the fact that you opened the conversation, you allowed me to ask them a couple questions. And, and for the first time, I actually believe that we might have jail building contractors who are open to, to looking at the real cost of goods the real cost and the return on investment of taxpayers' dollars being put into this government project, 
We need to take care of the problems we've got. That doesn't mean that I agree that we need a new jail. I do believe that we have to have facilities that work for people who are high in maximum security offenders. They need to be held, and they need to be held well. Seconds, Our employees please. need to be taken care of. Everybody needs to be taken care of, but we need to do it fiscally responsible because 40% of our people in Whatcom County are living in poverty. The people who are not living in poverty, I've, because I ran for sheriff this last year, do you know what? I've talked to people I never would, was never allowed to talk to before. We've got seniors and millionaires in this town who own land, who cannot afford to pay their taxes, and they're having to build it because our government is out of control. Thank you. Please allow I'm needs assessments to be real. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Allison Calder, Point Roberts. Uh, last time I was here, I was letting you know some of the things that Sustainable Point Roberts is doing. We started our Foster Love campaign. The local marketplace gave us one of those big bins that they have in their, their store that they have watermelons and pumpkins to give you an idea, you know, one of those. We filled it within a week of backpacks, lunch boxes, and um, suitcases um, for kids in foster care. We've emptied it, it's already halfway full. We're running it for the whole month. So the people of Point Roberts are coming together to help not just recycle, but also help people in, in need. Um, we are doing our World Ocean Day. We are also still going to be doing our um, bring your own bag, reduced using plastic grocery bags with the local grocery store, which again is going to help fund money for Dollars for Scholars, which is a local charity, helping our youth be able to go to school. So it's not just a recycling initiative for us, it's also helping others while we're doing it. Um, along with that, I will bring up a letter that was sent to council December 2nd by the PRCAC, um, asking that a review of our garbage ordinance be done in the early portion of 2020, as soon as data was available. Of course, we know anyone who owns a business, we've all filed our Department of Revenue, we've all filed our, our IRS tax forms as far as our employees go. Um, as locals, we have all received our final billing for the year. Um, so taxpayers has asked, voters has asked, the PRCAC has asked. So I would ask council if one member could please, at some point in this evening, make a motion that we are in 2020, we do have a year's full of data that is available by asking the provider or asking the UTC. Um, I would really appreciate if we moved forward Council members have suggested in previous meetings, you know, in November, we said we would look at this again after a year. It's been a year. Please do what's best for the people of Point Roberts and take a good look at this because it's not just the people of Point Roberts, it's also our environment. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Robert Lieb, uh, Whatcom County resident. Uh, Bellingham business owner. I'm speaking out against round three of another ballot initiative for the jail. Uh, I wasn't going to even bother trying to speak to you about this issue again because it's quite evident to me that there's a hidden agenda and you're going to do what you're going to do regardless of how many people stand up to you. <clears throat> what I did want to have on record is the case was uh, that I stood in front of you two years ago and told you that we would defeat the measure and we did. Uh, I warned you if you tried to use, if you tried to bring it onto the ballot, we would defeat it. Uh, we were successful, you were not. Uh, two years later and here I am again. <clears throat> Only I feel there's a sneaky agenda going on here and even though we're going to, we're going to cause it to fail again, um, you're going to do some kind of backward thing. So my wording is this, <clears throat> if that in fact is true from what I'm hearing, you're running the risk of a full on lawsuit and or a tax revolt. We will not stand up or stand by and let this just slip by the citizens. 30 years ago, I moved here this, this month, actually, <clears throat> and I was very positive that we were, I moved here from Canada, and I was very positive that we were overtaxed there, and Whatcom County was a very low tax area. Since then, I've watched my taxes go up and up and up, and found the government finds new ways to get, get into my pocket from all angles. It's now a very expensive area to live and to do business. When I look at my U.S. property assessments versus my Canadian property assessments, it's almost three times for, for assessed values, it's almost three times the cost here. And yet, what do we get? What do we get? 
uh, I, what I see is I, I receive very little return. In Canada, we have a lot, of, a lot more facilities and our tax dollars are being spent on fundamental basic needs for people. What I see here is a police state where the government tries to control everything and has a fee for every process along the way. Rather than build outreach facilities and recreational facilities or tax dollars, you like to hire enforcement and build great big jails. And you love filling them. It's so evident when I go back and forth between the two countries and it turns my stomach. The usual comment I get is, why don't you move back? Well, that day's coming very soon, I promise. However, in the meantime, I'm gonna do whatever I can to make this a better place for other families so they don't have to go through the shit that we've gone through here. You can try and make your backdoor deals with the jail corporations, but we will expose and we will shame you. 30 seconds, please. Your true intentions will be shown. With that said, I do have a question. In the past eight years, I've watched my property taxes rise 40% in the city and the county. I pay in both. Last year, the internet tax was implemented as well as you've been gathering taxes from the marijuana trade. What are you doing with all of that money? I imagine it has to be a windfall because the costs are way up. If it's so important to build this jail, why didn't you just use the funds that you already have? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I probably shouldn't be here because I'm dealing with another suicide today. Ken Calder from Point Roberts. I understand that there are things far more important than to, for this council to deal with than, than just garbage in Point Roberts. But right from the get-go, uh, myself and others that, that questioned where, where this was coming from and the need for it, have brought forward facts, and, and only facts. We haven't spoken about feelings. We have brought information, we did research, we delved into everything. We looked at the previous ordinances uh, that were written, the WACs, the RCWs, the Department of Ecology uh, mandate for reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, Whatcom County Code, is the same, reduce, reuse, recycle, except in Point Roberts. So uh, there's been some people writing letters in support of garbage, but most of those letters are based on feelings and not fact or friendships and, and not fact. Here are some facts that I've, I've presented you with. In the, the first page shows 2018, uh, versus 2019 tonnages for the first half or uh, up through the first three quarters. And you can see that our third quarter should have been our heaviest tonnage because that is when most of the seasonal people are down, July, August, September. It is barely, or it, it wasn't even our heaviest quarter. The second quarter was still slightly higher by 0.4 ton. So when you look at all of this, compared to the year before, our tonnages are down when the health department informed you that the need for this was to get rid of illegal dumping, cross-border trafficking of the, people, the, the Canadians taking the garbage home with them. Um, are they still doing it? Must be, because our tonnages are down. They must be taking even more back, even though they're mandated to pay for more. Doesn't make sense. In the beginning, we asked for a lower minimum level of service. At the uh, public hearing, it was brought up, I cannot remember, uh, I th think it might have been Mr. Bird that was talking with uh, our executive uh, when he was on the, the chair up, uh, on the council up here. 30 seconds, please. And it, it was asked for uh, possibly a, a lower level of service and, and it was not allowed, uh, S Mr. Sidhu said that we need to stick with the 26. Uh, onto the second page, you could see tonnages. The tax was collected from everybody uh, in the first six months was th almost $3,900. The tax paid to the county by tonnage, which is what the ordinance was rated at, was only paid out a uh, little over $1,000 back to the county. The provider got to keep 20. 800 and change in that first six months of tax monies collected from property owners. It's not right, 
and that needs to be looked into. Time. We need this garbage ordinance looked into. The, the facts are there. I have my final statement from CANDU. Every property owner has their final statement. The numbers are available. Please look into this ordinance. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Lynette Allen. i am uh, been an advocate and volunteer with Homes Now for the past two and a half years since they started. And I want to thank the city government and the county government for um, letting us continue. And uh, I have kind of fallen through the cracks here. So I know what a lot of people are going through. Um, I've been living on practically nothing for 42 years here. And um, I agree with Joy, definitely. Um, I, d I agree with the speaker that was just talking, the man, about the jail. Um, I'm going, well, what's going on? What, how does this system work anyway? What about the people? I'm looking at the system. I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not going to be around here much longer, but, well, I don't know how long, but anyway, who knows. But um, it's been my vision and my work that I don't get paid for <laughs> for years here. The big vision is for the people. That's why I volunteer with Homes Now. And that's why I write articles and post posts in um, social media and do everything I can, do interviews. I started my own little newspaper called, um, that's just online, called Bellingham Be Free Alt News. Uh, I hope you'll take a look at it. it. Represents a lot of research. I hope you'll think about this jail thing and and not push it through. It would be the wrong thing to do. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Clarifying question, yeah. ma'am. What what did you say your name was? Oh, Lynette Allen. Are, are you the... No, I'd like to be put down on there, so I'm, so this counts. Because there's a Lynn Allen that applied. That's not you? Lynn, yeah, Lynn Allen. You you did apply for the, for the position? I did, on I the, did, yes. Okay, thank you. My name's Deborah Holly. <clears throat> excuse me, Lemmy Island. Um, I don't have a prepared speech. As you can see, I turned in my application um, to be on the needs assessment committee for the stakeholder, stakeholder advisory board. Um, I was meaning to turn it in earlier, but I already had gotten off work to drive out here. And so that's why it's a hard copy like that. But anyway, okay, so I thank you for um, being a council-appointed member of the Whatcom County Jail Reduction and Prevention Task Force. Um, I've been honored to be a part of that as a consumer, um, representing my son, who has been a long-term revolving door uh, visitor of the Whatcom County Jail. Um, long time meeting off and on for 20 years before and after three prison sentences. Before that, I have a younger son who from juvenile, like the older one, juvenile age and on, was a frequent visitor. However, uh, he has been successful in turning his life around and is not a frequent visitor for 10 years now to any jail. Um, but I will tell you that um, I started a group and founded it um, 
I, I founded and facilitated a group in Whatcom County for those who have incarcerated loved ones. And I've been doing that for the last 10 years. I've done a lot of um, public awareness work about mass incarceration. And as my application says, I have a master's degree in a program from Antioch in Seattle that taught me how to create conditions for change, my area of interest being in the criminal justice system. And um, I know I'm forgetting some things, but I just, since I don't have a prepared speech, I thought I'd just give you this little narrative of my trip here from Lummi Nation School where I teach. Um, I think that I'm the best candidate for the position of criminal justice advocate on that advisory board because my little story is so frequent and it seems odd because I don't cry when I live it all the time, but maybe I am a little bit right now because on my way to this meeting, I was looking on the streets for my son and that's what I do a lot. 30 seconds, please. And, um, I just feel like I want to thank you also for um, appointing those positions um, this afternoon for users. I feel like, you know, we really need a really well-balanced uh, system with someone like myself who knows all too well what the needs are um, for, these, um, for these people. And um, I'd like to see the needs of my son met so I'm not walking around, I mean, driving around or whatever wondering where he is and when he'll be put back this time in time. Whatcom County Jail. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brel Froby and I grew up in Whatcom County in Deming and I live there currently. I recently moved back here because I deeply care about this community. I have experience, experience planning and implementing evidence-based programs in the field of juvenile justice and sexual assault and domestic violence prevention. And I'm passionate about public safety and reducing crime and incarceration. I first of all want to commend the council for choosing to create the stakeholder advisory committee for the public health, safety, and justice facility needs assessment. I think this is a very important decision due to the previous lack of support within the community for a new jail. Hopefully this committee will be able to help plan solutions and build public support for any future projects. I submitted my application to be a citizen criminal justice advocate and hope you will consider including me on the committee. I also wanted to express my concern about the decision to hire a design firm to conduct, to conduct both a needs assessment and a, des a design plan for a future facility. This presents a conflict of interest that I fear will make it harder to garner public support for the project. In the proposal and budget submitted by HOC Incorporated, it envisions three phases. In the first phase, it states many important goals and tasks, including that it will, quote, look for improvements and additional alternatives to reduce recidivism and improve rehabilitation, and, quote, ensure community needs for treatment of behavioral health and substance abuse disorders are addressed. These are, uh, there are two problems with this. First of all, a design firm is not an expert in this field of um, criminal justice reform. Um, phase one of this project should be conducted by an independent contractor who is an expert in the field. Our community would greatly benefit from phase one uh, needs assessment being conducted by an organization like the, for example, the Vera Institute of Justice who completed the report to Whatcom County st stakeholders on jail reduction strategies in 2017, which I wanna just note that they came up with some really great preliminary solutions, but they're very general and really need to be explored in much more in depth. Um, the other problem with this is, uh, is that once phase one is complete, who knows what the project needs will look like. If a building design firm is facilitating this process, there will be an inherent bias towards building a facility, which may or may not be the best solution to jail overcrowding and incarceration prevention and reduction. I really appreciate the council taking leadership on this issue, and I hope that you will consider hiring HOC Incorporated for only the building design phase of this project if a building is supported by the 30 public. 30 seconds, please. Uh, if indeed a building is supported by the public, but not for the phase one needs assessment. This will improve the chances of creating public support for this project. Lumping the needs assessment in with a building design contract seems to be putting the cart before the horse, especially when the public is not currently in support of, Time. of building a new jail. 
Thank you very much. Excuse me. What was your name again? Rel Froby. How do you spell your last name? It's F-R-O-E-B-E, -E, and I live in Deming, Washington. You said you applied? I did. Yeah, it's... What's in the other? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Michael Studoff. I've been a resident of Whatcom County for 31 years, likewise in the Deming area, and a resident of Bellingham for 12 years. I second the conflict of interest that this is going to cause, and I um, firsthand witnessed the school-to-prison pipeline that goes on. Um, our principal out in Mount Baker, he uh, carted, uh, shipped people out to Timbridge, the people that he deemed invaluable, the impoverished, the kids that they didn't think had hope. Um, and he told me, if I didn't find new friends, I would be going to prison. He knew that the prison, the, our system, spits and shoves people through it and gets us on a one track to, uh, um, yeah, nothing good. But um, I um, should note that my good friend was killed, um, or killed himself because a uh, jailer would not allow him any medical um, medication that stabilized him and he was brutalized by the prison guards and given several federal offenses. He was a young 20, 20 year old and felt he had no hope in his life after. I'm currently dealing with a friend who was released in the middle of snow this winter with the shorts and um, trying to help him out, not have him fall back in there. Um, I think it's completely appalling that the seven of you are going to decide the future of our county after we've all repeatedly said that we do not want this jail, the mega jail, with this company who is going to be pushing a project we don't need. We currently have a mental health facility being built. We know that the prison was being inflated by people with mental health disabilities, uh, homeless people, people that could easily be um, reverted around the system. With this new facility being built, we really don't know what our needs are at this moment. And to have a giant mega jail built at this time is outstanding. And no matter what you say, if you think this cautiously helps us move forward, however, with this contract, I, we know for sure that what this does, bottom line, is commits us to this contract with this jail builder who will greatly uh, sway his Good thing, uh, so, so Paul was hoping he wasn't leaving, okay. Um, yeah, it, we will be really biased in what needs we actually need as a county. So Paul, I'm really disappointed that um, you would push through this. I really hope that as a student agency who just put you in, uh, we really fought hard to try to get you in for Rick Larson. I really have hopes for you, but please do not uh, allow this to happen. Uh, lots more time to develop. Uh, the mental health facility to be built, and uh, have an independent and responsible uh, needs assessment, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I feel like a frequent flyer. Um, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking you, Tyler, and you, Kathy, and you, Ben, for this afternoon's hard thinking about um, putting the, the newer people that have applied on the um, risk assessments and the needs assessment. I truly am awestruck and thank the rest of you for supporting that. I truly appreciate it. I feel like I just might have been heard for the first time. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not going to apologize for being emotional. I have worked with way too many people whose lives have been absolutely devastated by what's going on here in this community. It is not right action, and is not for the higher grade of all people in our community. So with that, again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I also 
believe that we do not need a new jail, even a small one, for when we exercise some of the, we don't even know how much success we've had. You just said that this afternoon. You want stats of how many people have been successful in not remaining in the, in the jail, about how we have started some programs that we don't even know how they're going to expand and, and reduce our jail population. We need to do more of that before we hire someone. And I beg you, please, do not sign the contract for them. Let's give this some more time. And I know there's people in the audience that think we've had way enough time. We haven't had enough time to do the right thing yet, from my perspective. So, um, you know, I think the jail isn't in as nearly as bad a condition as um, it's being reported to be. It's a concrete and, and uh, steel structure. And it was built to support two more floors. So why don't we have some kind of uh, review on the jail, the physical structure of the jail? 30 and, seconds, please. And um, it's, it just makes sense to me that some of that 600 and some thousand dollars could go for some, um, if it's available, let's use it on some programs and take more people out of the jail before we try to build a new one. To me, and I know I'm a country girl, Lived on my farm for 74 years. Things are really simple out there. You know, Ben, you know how simple Time. life is. Let's do something simple. Let's, wouldn't it be awesome to, for Whatcom County to be known as the place that turned the mass incarceration around and helped their citizens? Thank you. Thank you. Today, Irene Morgan. I've lived on the Pearl Road for 74 years. Thank you. Carol Prairie, Whatcom County. Um, talked to you this afternoon, and and uh, um, the day that my um, attitude changed toward the jail. I'd heard a lot of facts and figures, but Ray Baraboo, who was then, and I don't know if he still is, the chaplain at the jail said, let me take you through the jail. So Max and I signed up, got our instructions, and I, I really wasn't prepared for what happened that day. Um, he's a pretty positive guy. He has a, a deep faith, and he he, um, I know he gives a lot of time and energy there, but he wanted us to see firsthand. And um, I've talked about it, uh, testified to it quite a few times, but it's the darkest place I've ever been. Not, not just for the people who work there, which I don't know why, they work there, or how they work there, but for the people who are incarcerated. And uh, it was a little bit scary, too. I don't know if you've ever looked in the eyes of someone who, who I think is really evil. I, I, I was afraid, and especially the condition of the building. And so I think that um, a lot has been said even here tonight about uh, a, a, a huge jail that we're trying to build. That's not the case. There's a lot of misinformation. But I want to remind you, uh, Council, uh, redundancy and waste are, are my concerns. And that's what I said this afternoon. Um, I hope to the executive, and I think Tyler Schroeder knows more about it than anybody on the face of the earth. <laughs> but anyway, and, and I probably have opinions different, but I want to remind you, there's been three, three jail committees, and I checked with Sheriff Elfo this afternoon. There's been three. 30 seconds, please. Oh, dear. Horizontal, vertical. That's been studied to death. Land, 
every piece of land that could be built on for a jail. It's been studied. There's a, a big study. Beds, how many beds? Did you hear him say this afternoon, pods? Have you seen the architectural drawings? They're beautiful. In fact, I thought, hmm, that's awful pretty for a jail. And you said the same thing, and we talked about it. Training dogs uh, and horses, that came up this afternoon. And remember Barbara? Oh, we've got, to have, we've got to have gardens for these people, and we've got space, and with a horizontal light. Did you hear the fellows talk about the importance of light? The, the plan that we already have on the shelf has light. It's beautiful. It has pods. We didn't know how big they'd build. We, we, did you hear them this afternoon? They said pods. We could build two and have a place for the other two. The big thing when, the, when they started talking about the jail was that when they moved into this jail, it was too small. And so that was the controversy. So, oh. so that's time, Carol. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, though. And someone, one of you said at the last two weeks ago, I'm sorry, anything that we would build would be better than what we have. Thank you, Pastor, or Councilman Brown. Thank you, Carol. Hi, good evening, my name is Bill Angel. I'm a citizen of Bellingham. And um, I just ask for you to slow down and, and potentially modify this contract to, uh, uh, for the jail. Uh, um, looking into the jail, I think that uh, it is two different pathways that need to be taken, one towards uh, examining a needs assessment, a needs assessment that needs to be done uh, for our county to um, examine what the, a user's assessment, like the Vera Institute of Justice uh, asked for and recommended for us to uh, minimize our uh, the burden on our jail system and on our taxpayer, uh, our taxpayers. Um, we spend a lot of money on, uh, on criminal justice and on jailing people when there are a lot of uh, opportunities that we haven't explored uh, for um, hurting people from uh, criminal justice system. Um, took a tour of the jail not too long, maybe five months ago. Uh, you know, it was pretty interesting. Seeing the complexion in the jail, uh, you know, mostly non-white, um, felt like um, we have a long way to go, you know, towards finding justice in our community. Um, you know, can't measure the successes of the young diversion policies we've been implementing. Uh, it hasn't been that long. I appreciate the study uh, that and and the process that you brought forward. Uh, I think it was. Uh, good for it what it was, it was incomplete uh, for what we need. Uh, I think that uh, we need to look closer at the Vera Institute and their recommendations and, and save our, cost pay, our taxpayers money. We, we deserve it. We deserve not to launch into a $600,000 contract that's gonna end up in another jail proposal. I'd like to see a lot more diversion processes put in place. I'd like to see the whole breadth uh, of what we can do to keep people out of jail and keep the families from being ruined for jail or bail policies. Um, we ruin families right off the bat without, uh, without being um, deemed guilty. And so let's, let's own innocent until proven guilty. It might be one place to start. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Seeing no one, we will close the open session and we will go to the consent agenda to finance. Consent I get to do all at once, right? If they all got through your committee, yes. Yeah. She can double. No, they didn't. Okay. They, um, the, do I need to read each one in again? No. Okay. Um, they didn't all get through. So item one, two, three. Not three. Not three. Not three. So 
Oh, three was the one, two. Thank you. Yep. One, two, um, four, five, six, seven. Right? Yep. Uh, past committee, three, zero. Right, and I so move. Okay. We have a motion for items one, two, and four through seven. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, now item three. They didn't pass committee. They didn't com pass committee. Is there uh, any council member that wishes to make a motion? Mr. Chair, as a member of the committee, I wish to move this forward for consideration. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, move this to the full council. Uh, discussion. Bird. Sure. I, I said this before and I'll say it again. Um, I think good process is process in which uh, we do our best to limit any kind of possibility of, of bad process or bad transparency or lack of transparency or the potential to abuse the process. And my concern in this situation is when you have entities that are actively campaigning or assisting in the campaigning of elected officials and then come back to us and ask us to write them checks out of taxpayer funds. Um, I think that that's whether or not everything's above board at any given point in time, the process in itself is designed in a way that it can be abused. And I think that we need to be very careful about that and we need to have very clear separation and we need to do our best to ensure that if groups are electing individuals that there's no way that those groups might financially benefit from taxpayer dollars being contributed to them. So in this case, I, the program I don't disagree with, but I disagree with the fact that that group has helped campaign in the past. And so I, I'm not supporting this bill for that reason. Any other discussion? Ms. Kirshner. Um, I'm also not supporting this bill, and the reasons are um, in line with um, Councilmember Birds, but also this organization has um, championed our, the students that they are supposed to be going into schools and training on how to reduce their um, garbage and uh, keep stuff out of our landfills. They've championed those students walking out of school and going on a strike. Well, I pay taxes to fund schools year round, and I don't appreciate a group that would encourage the students to walk out of their education for a day. That's a lot of money. We pay about $15,000 per year per student, and I want those students sitting in school if I'm paying for it. So I'm not gonna support this um, based on um, fundamental differences in many things, but uh, fundamentally on this particular issue because I don't think they're doing the students that they purport to support a favor when they encourage them to walk out of school on a strike. Brown? I went into this in detail earlier this morning. I'll just limit my comments to the fact that whether I agree with, I support them, well, first off, I support the mission of resources, let me be clear in this in this particular regard. The But whether it was resources or any other organization, if I fundamentally believe in what the value of the contract is, I'm not going to penalize them because they may have, have opposed me or opposed, uh, expressed their opinion to oppose some form of, of uh, county government at some point that's not appropriate. I think this thing should stand on the merits of the contract and, and that alone. Mr. Allenboss? Yeah, I'm <clears throat> I don't think we should fund this request either um, for the reasons stated by Council Member Kirshner and Bird. Um, uh, it's, it's deeper than there's a fundamental difference. I, I agree with their um, stated goals. I have a hard time with their tactics. Um, if you talk to businesses around the, around the county, you'll, you'll, um, You'll hear about, um, you know, what I would consider green mail. Um, if you look at the definition of domestic terrorism, uh, you you might even you might even identify with some of the stuff that they do um, as that. Uh, they didn't just campaign for individuals; they 
um, interfered with the public process, uh, the public process that set the way council members would be elected who would then decide how the money was divvied up. Um, you know, uh, for example, council member Brown, you donated money to my, my opponent and you and I can still work together. So it's, it's a, it's a way different thing than just, than just disagreeing with them. Um, it's their tactics and I can't support it with taxpayer dollars. Uh, Ms. Frazee. Yes, I, I just want to read the request. Um, request authorized for the county executive to enter into a contract amendment between Whatcom County and Resources to increase the number of educational outreach opportunities in the amount of $15,000 for a total amended contract amount of $65,000. And again, this is um, an educational opportunity. Um, if we do not allow resources to do it, then who's going to pick up this um, gap for educating our children on recycling? So I am going to support this. Mr. Donovan. Yeah, I'll, I'll concur with, with Ms. Frazee here. And I, and I actually appreciate that you know, I, don't, I don't like the optics um, of having a group that's politically active doing this, but this went out for an RFP. Anybody could respond to this request for proposals for re recycling, um, for recycling education. This has been recommended by the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, and you know it, it can go out again for another RFP, and maybe somebody else will respond to it. But this is this is where we at. We don't have anybody questioning their capacity to actually deliver the, the services in terms of recycling education. So um, <clears throat> I support this. Um, but comparing this, so that, you know, there's a lot of groups they have, you know, they have their nonprofit side, they have their political arm, they can use so much of their um, capacity to do political work within whatever the bounds that the state sets. And, and you know, I, I think this is one of those groups that does that. And maybe that work has been involved with some stuff that you've seen in terms of people um, petitioning or picketing or whatever. But to call that domestic terrorism, I, I think that's like, that's not a slippery slope. That's like cascading off a cliff. Domestic terrorism is, you know, coordinating militia groups and advocating violence against the government like Matt Shea, the Republican from the east side of the state here. Um, having petitions or circulating petitions or picketing peacefully, to call that domestic terrorism is, 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 is kind of frightening, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I stand by what I said. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 That passes 4-3 with Bird, Kirshner, and Ellen Boss opposed. Chair. Yes, Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, I need to read something in the record before the next item, if I may. Okay. Yeah. I figure you pass those down. Uh, this is a formal request by myself, Councilmember Brown, for clarity as to whether a conflict of interest exists or could exist under state law in the county code. The background of this is the Boys and Girls Club is in the process of taking over the childcare operations of Kids World as the existing owners have said they are unable to continue due to the high number of their clients who receive state subsidies, which after recent increases in the minimum wage are now no longer enough to cover labour costs. Second is the, uh, the, Belling the Boys and Girls Club is unable, if the Bell Boys and Girls Club is unable to find funding to take over the Kids World operations, Approximately 120 staff will lose their jobs and 530 children will be displaced, which could have a significant impact on these families and the community's workforce. Without assistance, these jobs and childcare slots could disappear within two months. Further, the, the, Belling, the Boys and Girls Club has requested financial assistance from the County Council to assist paying the first few months' rent to Kids World. It is expected that future amounts may be requested as well. Next, one long-term solution may be for either the County or the Cities of Bellingham slash Ferndale to purchase facilities that can be used by the Boys and Girls Club, perhaps at little or no charge, 
for five years, after which time the Boys and Girls Club could purchase the properties at cost. I have proposed using county EDI money to provide funding for building acquisition. These facilities could then be used by the, these could be the current Kids World properties or others, and other discussions at the state level to provide additional funding are also occurring. Now, the reason I'm making this statement is because I need to disclose a relationship. Kids World is, is owned and operated by Michael Waters and Bob Warshaw. I have no commercial or substantive relationship with Waters. I do have the following relationships with Warsaw, which out of an abundance of caution, I am proactively placing on the record. I have been friends with Bob Warshaw for over 20 years. I have and still, I have in the past and still do, am involved in several inv investments with Warshaw. However, I have never had any involvement with Kids World and never participated in any real estate with Warshaw. I'm making the following formal request of the County Council's legal counsel. While I do not believe that there is any scenario in which I or members of my family could or would benefit from any transaction, transaction involving the County, the Boys and Girls Club or Kids World, however, in an effort to promote trans transparency and to avoid even the appearance of conflict, I am hereby formally requesting a review of the above by the County's legal counsel Furthermore, I am hereby formally abstaining from voting on any appropriation of funds on this matter until such guidance can be provided. Thank you. Okay. Which item are we on? No, I might appreciate <laughs> you doing that, but I, I was. It's the next item. It's the county. 2020 0246, or 046. It's the. I thought we're on the consent agenda. For... Budget request number four. Oh, okay. I thought that was number one under other items. But well, we had already removed some things. Maybe I get my consent agenda and other items stuff. We'd removed a couple things from the consent agenda or the other items. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. I, I was no. We removed one item from the consent request. agenda, and then we voted on that separately. Okay. And so we were through. Now we're on other items. Okay. I was. So we're on number one of other items. Correct. Okay. So we did come back to number five on the consent agenda. Those, um, I'm, I'm sorry. So we, when we did the consent agenda, we did one, two, four, and seven. Everything but four. Four, five, six, and seven. Everything but three. Everything but three. Okay, I had circled the wrong things here. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still catching up there. Okay, now we're on number one. Okay. I, just, so I, just, I thought we'd forgot one. Okay. Um, so I have a question for Councilmember Brown. Yep. Um, since this piece is only one piece of this budget request, a supplemental budget request, we cannot, I don't believe we can bifurcate or trifurcate uh, supplemental, can we? No, we can't. I'll, I'll just abstain. So you want to abstain for the whole thing? Yep. Okay. Yep. We got that out of the way. Okay. So do we have a motion from I finance? I, oh, I'm not in finance. Yeah, um, AB 2020-046, ordinance amending the Whatcom County budget, request number four in the amount of $193,202. It's pages two through 12 in your packet. And that passed in committee earlier today, 3-0. I still move. Thank you. Um, um, real quick, uh, what do you call point, point of order? Sure. Okay. Question. You're on that committee. Mm -hmm. So does his... Does this make the vote from this morning different or no? No, because I voted I voted to forward this to the full council. Okay. The full council is now voting on the appropriation. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, any discussion? Being none with the clerk. Yeah, uh, 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 oh, well, yeah. The uh, if you have time and you want to listen more about this conversation, you can go back to our committee meeting earlier today. Uh, I, I think uh, several of us stressed the importance of this. And $100,000 of this is budgeted, but not contracted, 
to the Boys and Girls Club. So we're setting it aside right now and earmarking it. But really, we're looking for more data as well and asking for a presentation so that we can understand how that money is going to be spent and what the plan is moving forward for that um, and what will potentially happen or what the plan might be if Olympia doesn't come in and, and correct the issue in 2021 so that we know how we're going to be moving forward and how it's going to be handled. So this doesn't necessarily commit the funding at this point in time or, or give the funding, but it is kind of earmarking it and committing it now. So, Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Barry Buchanan? Yes. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Sign. That passes six to zero to one abstention. Next on the agenda is AB 2020-052, ordinance amending the project budget for the new GL project fund 2013-2014, request number five, pages 13 through 17 in the packet. The, and there was an amendment to that. Do we, is that a separate document by chance or? or is, I believe that was a yellow covered. It was just the adding the word public, is that correct? On that one? In the word new. It's, it's the red. Thanks, yes. Kathy. Right. So, okay, that'll be the, the red document. I don't know if there's any back there, but um, the title of the fund was updated to ref or excuse me, go ahead. Or what am I? No, that's not, that's not the correct one. That's not one. the red one? Okay, so I, maybe we don't have a copy up here. Maybe it's in the yellow one. No. I don't think we have a copy. Dana, how, how would that work? Does that still... You, can just, you could move to amend it tonight just to add that yeah. word. Okay. Um, so it was earlier amended. Uh, Ms. Kirshner, I believe that was your amendment in committee, sure. correct? Uh, would you like to make that motion again then? Sure. I'll move that we... Um, I'll move approval for AB 2020-052 with an amendment on the now therefore be it or further ordained that the name of the fund be changed to new public health safety and justice facility project fund, including the word public in front of health. I will second that as your fellow committee member. Okay, we have uh, an amendment on the main motion before us, change, uh, adding the word public. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Now we have the main motion before us. Which passed committee 3-0, and I so move. Okay, any discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Tyler Bird? Yes. Todd Donovan? Yes. Ben Ellenboss? Yes. Carol Frazee? Yes. Kathy Kirshner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. That passes 7-0. Next item on the agenda is AB 2020-077. This request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement or amendment between Whatcom County and City of Blaine for the purposes of adjusting the EDI loan terms on the Gateway Regional Stormwater Project, pages 18 through 24 in the packet. That passed committee 3-0, and I so move. Okay, we have that motion in front of us. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. The next item is AB 2020-047, resolution to approve annual petition for refunds, paid list consistent with RCW 84.69.020, pages 25 to 42 in the packet, and that also passed committee 3-0. I so move. Okay, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7-0. And for reference, all of these items were discussed in committee in, earlier today as well. So we're not blindly voting on them. Uh, we did have good conversation about them today. Okay, we'll turn to the uh, Council Public Works and Health Committee. Okay, resolution AB 2020-056. Resolution to establish income eligibility des designation for use of the Veterans Assistant Fund, 
pages 43 to 58, and that passed in committee three to zero, and I so move for approval. Okay, we have that motion in front of us. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say oh, it. Can I make oh, a comment? Sorry. That's yes, what, Mr. I just wanted to make a comment publicly that we have got the best veterans department in the United States, I'm sure of it. Um, we had a great presentation. If anybody chooses to watch it, I think you can find it on the um, YouTube channel. But Liz, Liz uh, it's Harmon, right? Harmon Craig. Yeah, she does a fabulous, fabulous job with our veterans in Whatcom County. You can be proud. Uh, can I add to that? Yes, Mr. Don. And, and the program is funded by a property tax millage that, uh, actually, I, I encourage anybody to look at the presentation in terms of what that program in the health department can do for housing and, and mental health services and benefits and helping people who maybe aren't getting what they can, could get fully that they deserve from the VA. Um, but we also learned that um, if council would want to, that we can, we are not taking what the state allows us to fully collect for that. Right now, it's, I think she said about $2 for a $300,000 property. Um, and we are eligible to collect more of that for these programs if we were interested in doing that. Another dollar or something. Could be money well spent. Other discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7 0. Next is an item from, uh, from the uh, Council Special Committee of the Whole. It's AB 2020-055, request authorization for the county executive to enter into a contract between Whatcom County and Helmuth, Obeda, and Casabaum Incorporated, or HOK, to develop a Whatcom County public health, safety, and justice facility needs assessment in the amount of $629,694 that uh, we had a presentation from HOK. Uh, we had a motion that uh, to forward this to the council. It passed five to one to one abstention uh, earlier today. Uh, so I would bring that motion forward this evening. I so move approval. I'll second if we need a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? I just point out that the- Yes. The dollar amount, 629, 694, is a, is a potential if we, if we go through the full range of what is, is, is in the contract, but the, the hard start is gonna be more around 400, um, some 300 and something. So we may get to 629, we may not. More discussion? Ms. Kirshner. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out too, um, based on some of the comments that were in the open session, that this is funding that uh, needs assessment that was talked about. We're, we're funding exactly what you requested. We're not going barreling into a plan that we don't know will work. We want to get the community's input on um, what, what you want. If you want services, what does that look like? Um, and we're going to be selecting members of a committee here and at the end of the evening. But this is for the needs assessment. So this is, um, this is not putting the horse before the cart, right? No, it is putting the horse before the cart, not the cart before the horse. We're trying to do it right. <laughs> Other discussion? Crazy. Yes, I just want to encourage anyone um, to watch the video. And we had a really robust conversation, had public input, which was great. So I encourage you to look back at that. Mr. Ellenboss. Now I'm probably going to be the lone no vote on this, and it doesn't speak to what, whether I feel like uh, there is a need to have these, this facility and alternatives, because I'm generally supportive of that. Um, however, I, I feel like um, with all of, well, quite frankly, Mrs. Perry's comments summed up a lot of my feelings. Um, we've done a lot of good work. We've got a great um, committee that's been working for years on alternatives, and we're putting together another committee that is going to be full of experts in a in a wide array. And I'm not. I f I feel like we know what we need to do. We know what our community is looking for, and with 
the group that we're putting together, we can come to the conclusion that we're going to come to spending the 629000 and I feel like it would be a better use of taxpayers' dollars to put that to something other than a rubber stamp process. Bert? I have a question for Ben real quick. When you say the group we're putting together, specifically you're referring to the stakeholder advisory committee we're going to appoint later, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, thanks. The, um, I abstained earlier, but <coughs> the, I think you guys did a great presentation. I, I really appreciate that. The, if we were to build a jail uh, or any kind of additional facilities, even if it's not a jail and it's, it's just dedicated to diversion services, after seeing some of the projects that you've done and some of the thought process, I, I want you guys to do it. I, I think that you, you have the experience and the insight and uh, you'd create a great facility for us. So I think that's exciting. The, for the same reason that I said earlier with the, the resources funding, though, I, I'm going to vote against this in concept to, while I don't believe that there would be any conflict or that anything would happen, there is the potential or a possibility that you could find more of a resource or more of a demand to build a larger facility. And I, I don't think that would happen in your case at all, but, um, it, but I didn't, I'm not saying it happened in resources case earlier either. It's, it's more about does the process allow for it? And if it does, is that good process? I don't think it's good process if you are. So my preference would be to break it apart and have two different groups do this and have one group come in and do the data and the research that's entirely unaffiliated with any group in our community and unbiased and just looks at the data and says exactly here's the breakdown of what you need and then we decide how we're going to move forward from there the i'd feel more comfortable with that at the end of the day so i'll join you brown yeah i, I respect mr alabanza's com comments about the fact that we've already done um, we've already hired other people in the past, but at the end of the day, the vision that they came back with was not one that the public was willing to support. Yeah, uh, I, I hope you don't feel like I, I'm saying we should just go with what we did. I, I, I guess I feel like we've learned some valuable lessons. We've gotten feedback from the community, and some of that feedback was be responsible with our tax dollars, and some of it was other things. And so I guess to summarize... I haven't told one person, hey, we're talking about 629000 for another study, and not one person has said, oh, good. Everyone is like, we're going to do what? So that's kind of how. But to continue, yep. if I may. Sorry, I the, get excited. <laughs> so, we, you know, we've, we've spent this money. We've spent money in the past. We have, we, they, that has produced a vision which the public has not accepted. Uh, I, I, you know, I've walked through... This jail, I've walked through. You know, I mean, I've spent I've spent time inspecting this jail on several occasions. I've spent time out at the work centre on several occasions. I've also looked at alternative facilities such as the one in Skagit, and and ours is a death trap. And uh, one of the reasons I have been supportive of replacing the jail above all else is it's an inhuman place, inhumane place, for both inmates and staff alike. And I'm deeply concerned of the day that we have a, even a moderate size earthquake. I don't know how the building's going to stand up. So therefore, I think I'm supporting this because we need, to, we need help to find the vision that the public supports so that we can put people in, we can put the inmates and the staff in a humane facility that will serve this community um, as necessary in the years to come. Yeah. I very much agree with that last part, hearing from the community and seeing what they need. And I think that is in relation to that next issue as well. I, I, I'm a strong believer that that stakeholder advisory committee needs to remove all of the bureaucrats and all of the politicians and add, take those positions and add them to community <coughs> members. And we need to have those people there making the decisions. We've been in every single process up to this point. We, they've heard from us multiple times. We've 
put that idea forward multiple times. It's failed every single time. Let's go let them have 100% of the game, 100% of the spots, and listen to them. Let them come together. It's a very diverse group of people that have applied. And if, if you all can come together and create something that everyone's happy with, there will not be a better solution at the end of the day. And that HOK will still be working with the technical advisory committee and the bureaucrats separately to figure out all the technical needs that are required. They're still gonna be interviewing every single one of the politicians and, and department heads that are gonna be involved. They're still gonna be talking to those people through all of the other groups and committees that we have in place. It's, I think, really important that we have a group of just community members where they feel comfortable sharing and talking and not being influenced by us. Because otherwise, we're gonna, my, I really am afraid that we end up in the same place because we are loud and we're vocal and we get into rooms and we talk over people and we try to convince them our way is the best. And people tend to shut up and let us speak and agree with us and say yes, and then they leave and they say, wow, that's not what I wanted, but I'm glad he's done talking. So I don't wanna hear that happen again. And I'm worried about it. So. Well, I'm definitely gonna, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna support this for a lot of reasons. Yeah. But he's done talking. <laughs> Sorry, Barry. I couldn't yeah, resist. Too. Yeah. <laughs> nice to so I'm supporting this for a lot of reasons. I, I, but, but one of the things that stands out to me is, is that you mentioned the, the, some potential conflict of interest in the, the needs assessment phase one portion. Well, they had the, the insight and the foresight to, if you look at the allocation of resources that was emailed to you by Tyler, all that work is being done by the behavioral health experts and uh, JFA, which is... Uh, uh, Jay Farberstein, so it's not HOK that will even be performing the needs assessment portion. So uh, I'm very much at ease because I, I feel that they saw that, they understood that that could be a potential conflict, and they did, they took steps to prevent that. So I think that's admirable. So I'm supporting it. Any other discussion, Mr. I, 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 I loved everything that HOK showed us. Like, I felt like a a kid that was looking at sports cars that I couldn't afford, um, <laughs> which is part of my hesitation. But <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I'm, I feel like our people and what we've learned can guide us to get to what the community needs without spending the 630000 and present it to the people that will design it for us. That's... I don't oppose moving forward, and I fully agree with everything you said about the jail. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. No. No. So that passes five to two with Ellen Boss and Bird opposed. Okay, moving on to the resolution amending the membership of the stakeholder advisory committee for the Public Health, Safety, and Justice Facility Needs Assessment. We've had all kinds of activity in the last couple of hours on this. Um, you're gonna need to help me, staff, sort through this, because I don't know that we even have the latest. That's yours, I don't have. I don't have the other one. No. That's not in here, that was separate too. That's, that's in was the that the other one? Can look at that Because they had mentioned that there was three in here, but possibly a fourth. Was that the fourth? That one. That was the fourth. Okay. No, I don't know. I, I, I'm how many? How many more? Looking for the copy that I has. There was maybe this one. Coming, so Which one is the, the yellow? It's the yellow one, the, Barry. The yellow one yeah. is the. Oh yes, yes. Late applications. But um, if I can, I have a, ask a clarifying question. So the yellow one, um, you've helped us out by taking all the applicants and putting them under the categories in which they've applied. Kathy, is that correct? <laughs> Kathy, sorry. You're on the resolution. Pardon me? 
No, we're, we're just trying to sort through whether we're going to add more positions. That's I think that's the first thing we need to do. Right, forgive me, I'm, I jumped ahead. Forgive me. Yeah, it's the it's the, it's the yellow one is the latest one that has the applications that were actually received today, and then this was I sold this. on top of that. So well, this is in addition to what you have in your yellow packet. So the first thing we need to do is decide what we want to do okay. with late applications. I move to accept for consideration. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, to uh, allow these folks to join the ranks of those who are being put forward this morning, or this afternoon, tonight. Gosh, long day. Whenever. Yes. So we're moving, the motion would be to add the people that didn't make the deadline for consideration. The yellow's packet. Yep. What was the deadline? <coughs> One's dated the fourth. The other one's dated the fourth. One's dated the ninth. Okay, so we do have a motion and a second to accept those. Do any discussion? Ben? Um, I didn't, I haven't looked at the names of who, so, uh, I was, I was very excited about just taking everybody who we had who made the deadline and have it in big group. And then, um, there were concerns from other council members that our group was going to be too big. Um, but I guess I'm, if, if we don't have a deadline, why, why would we even have a deadline if we don't? I guess it would be very clean and not political in any way, shape, or form if we go with the people who applied before because we just took everybody who applied and then um, because you didn't meet the deadline that not only did we set but then reset even longer um, I think it might be very fair and very non, I want this person, you want that person to just take everyone like we talked about before that, that put in before the deadline and if you put in after the deadline, I'm sorry, but you missed the deadline. And, and I'm, I haven't looked at who was before or after the deadline. I'm just trying to make it as fair and clean as, as we can get it. Oh, uh, follow up. Donovan. Yeah, I was, I think the only one who didn't, who was saying, I didn't want to add everyone because we're going to get to this committee that's like now like 33 people. But now that's at 33 people, I'm like, eh, what's 37? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I don't know. And I mean, and a couple of like, it, with the deadline was 10 a.m. the 4th, and here's one at 11 20, 11, 11 So yeah, some related, but like, I don't know. I mean, tell that I, to I the tax it, man. Though. I think it's already too big, so what's. I was just trying to respect that I, I, it's too big so, and not yeah, get, I'm, like, I'm fine with 37. Mr. Brown. <laughs> yeah, just to be clear, my motion was not to expand the number further. It was just it was to consider it. No, one step at a time. Yes, yeah. so it was just right. simply to allow these to be considered. Yeah, so I, I was, I'm, at this point, eh, it'll work. It'll work or it won't work. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. <laughs> but we have considered. Sorry, what, we have, we have the motion is just to consider these. Are we? Yeah, so, well, we still have to vote on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'll Better save my comments. Yep. I'm just trying to make it clean. I'd just like to clarify which agenda item you are on right now. Yeah, I was. <laughs> it's not on the, yellow one. the purple one. Well, that's a good point. Here. We, we're on the... Uh, we're not following the purple. Well, yes, we green. are. Actually, we are. Okay. We, we are on the uh, resolution amending the membership. So if we, if we are going to uh, consider these people or these numbers, we're going to have to fold that into that piece, that agenda item. We're going to have to add more numbers to our, to our committee. 
Right. So you'd be amending it, it's, the resolution. It's kind of weird because it's separate, but yet it's it's definitely relevant. I guess what she's saying is there's not. If you look on the purple one, this isn't this isn't here on it. Right. It was just the where where we voted on the money, and now we roll right into. Lummy Island Ferry Advisory yeah. Countywide Flood Zone and then BB ben, Warm. The green one came as a supplemental, like right after that on Thursday or something. Like, this so, and then this. Yeah. And the green one is the committee portion, which was amended earlier today. And then the yellow one is the additional applications uh, that came in. The green one. The green gotcha. one. Hey, this isn't bad. You, I mean, if you can't keep track of these five, what are you going to do when we have 20? Uh, yeah. Have you lost your tractor recently? Um, I have lost a tracker before, but not recently. Ms. Kirshner. So there's a motion on the floor to accept all the applications for consideration. It's not an agenda bill. It's just a motion, correct? Correct. So we can vote on that yes. after discussion, right? Right. Okay. Further discussion on accepting these applications. For consideration. Yeah, accepting the, uh, yeah, for consideration. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that passes six to one exactly. with Mr. Ellenboss opposed. I just want it clean. Now, uh, now we have to figure out how to amend how to amend it to add those numbers into our our uh, resolution. Good an idea. That wasn't so crazy voting no. <laughs> Can I move to add the yellow thing to the green thing? Just this is what we just did. No, we just moved to consider these, but we'll consider all of the applications, right? So I think he's asking, how do we update the red one yeah. now? The um, incorporating the red one into the yellow one. Yeah. So I would. Which I, goes on, into the green one. I would move that we replace the four seats for the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force, which represent a, more elected officials. It would add another elected official from City of Bellingham, so you get two council members and the mayor, and another staff member from Whatcom County. Um, and it actually adds two additional five seats instead of four and replace that with the four people with four additional seats for the community members who applied late. That's my motion. Do I need to restate that? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I would move that we replace the four seats dedicated for the incarceration prevention task force on the committee with four new seats, which the community member applicants could use. Point, point of order, Mr. Chairman. We, we have to have a motion to consider this document before we can amend it. So I will move to, I, I make a motion to adopt this document. That is correct. That's the first thing we have to do. I will second that, and then I have a, just a clarification. So when we added, considering all the other applications, it was not just the ones on the yellow thing, but also the, the ones separate from Just that. to add them to the consideration list. It's not about the actual I will second your motion to amend the uh, semi-original. No, no, it's a motion to adopt. To adopt, which and then we Mr. Bird is making a motion to Mr. amend Mr. Bird is amending it. Now we have a second. Now we can make a motion. Right. Did I make the motion I just made? Exactly. A minute ago. Do yeah. I need to restate it again? I think, I think you don't think you need to say it probably 20 can I, can I make a request <laughs> that you open up the red packet, go to exhibit A, and call out which one by number as it's numbered, which one oh, you're sure. talking about moving? Number eight. Just for clarity's sake. Number eight. Okay. That we replace, we remove number eight, the seats representing number eight, which would be four seats for the Incarceration Prevention Task Force, which there's four seats on here, but they've appointed five people. Not sure, but remove number eight and replace that with four additional seats for community members. I, I'll just speak against the motion because it's I got a, we don't have I'm a sorry, second. We don't have a second. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll second it. Okay. No. <laughs> I was like, let's speak against the motion because I, I I actually think it's valuable to have overlap between the prevention and reduction task force and this committee. So if that. We still do, because all of the other bureaucrats on there are on the other committee as well. So you still have, I, I can count for you, because I actually tallied it up. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people who are on the Incarceration Prevention Task Force that will also be on this. 
So these P these would be. The we don't have a second yet. Yeah, yeah we I did. Second. Ben oh, seconded. Okay. So these would be seats that would be appointed by the task force, and you're saying, since we already have applicants from the task force that are applying to this, we already have no. that overlap. You already you have nine seats that are represented on the task force that are also represented on this. So there's seats like the mayor of Bellingham, the executive, a city council member from Bellingham, a city council member from, or county council member, um, the sheriff, the chief of police for Bellingham. But your, so your proposal was seats, number eight, was it? Right, so that's eight more seats in addition to those nine, or excuse me, four more seats, technically five more seats in addition. We're basically rolling the whole incarceration task force over because then you have two more members who aren't a part of that, who are a part of the applicants. So you end up with a total of 17 people from the Incarceration Prevention Task Force that are also on this committee, and they're talking to them both. I mean, half of your committee is. Well, I think you're, you're, there's two things going on here. There's, there are jurisdictional stakeholders that have to be on here no matter what, which should be the city, the county, the tribes, those sorts of things. So whether you want to say those are task force members, they got to be on one way or other. There's other people from the task force who are not those government entities who, who we might get some overlap here. So it's just me, but I think that's valuable. That, that was we my have point. two of those in the applicants as well. You have Heather Flaherty and Arlene Felt. Felt, who are already in applicants. So you end up with two people separate from those four de dedicated seats. I see value in that. I thought okay. Mr. Brown had his yeah. hand up. Or Brown. Mr. Yeah, I mean, the issue about bureaucrats on this, if I count it up, we have five, five members of government listed here who are not elected. So everybody else is elected, and as you know, to get elected, you have to represent the views of at least a majority of the population in your district, otherwise you don't get elected. So you, therefore you are bringing, an elected is bringing to this task force the, the, the words that they've heard from their constituents, and if they're doing their job properly, they are reflecting it. Better, with all respect to the people who are volunteering to join this committee, those people who are volunteering are not, not required to be directly accountable to people in their district in an elected capacity. So I see no negative in having elect, electors on this, on this board. Yeah, all of those elected officials are still involved in the process. Matter of fact, they're getting one-on-one -on -one interviews in some cases by HOK, as well as they will be on other committees that HOK is involving, and they'll be at other events. They are thoroughly involved in this process, whereas more representation from the community gives us more buy-in from the community, gets us better understanding of what the community wants, gets us better engagement, and it has a much better positive in relation to us representing the community and being elected and, and being their voice, I think in an ideal world that's the case, but I would look out here to all of these people from both sides of the, of the spectrum on the last ballot issue and say, how well do you think that the elected officials represented you? And do you think that took place at all? Because it failed twice and this council approved it twice, as far as I'm aware. The, you know, Mary says I'm wrong, but so I don't know, I feel like we need more of them. I'll leave it at that. I mean, we have all of those seats, we have those people here. I'd rather less, less overlap, you still have overlap and more community, but that's my argument, I'm done. Brown? Yeah, just to be clear, I, as I, when we took the votes to put that on the ballot the last time, I, I, the number one reason I put it on the ballot is I felt it was a citizen decision, not an elected decision. And so it was not one where I was willing to, to oppose it based on my views, whether I agree with it or not. I felt it was my responsibility to put it forward to the citizens for a vote, and I will do so with the next one for the citizens to decide. Further discussion on Mr. Bird's motion? Yes, Mr. Ellenbos. I, I, yeah, I, I think that just speaks to um, Council Member Bird's uh, thought process behind having the citizens, more citizens, engaged in what we do bring forward when we're asking for the funding for this. So I, I'll speak in favor of substituting number eight for the other citizens. 
Other discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. I'm abstaining. One abstention. I'm abstaining. So that uh, fails two to four with one abstention. Are we Other ideas? Can we Bain motion? A Bain motion where we add these four positions or applications to now we can we do that now well that's that's now that's interesting because now we have a yeah, that on this agenda item actually assign those spots without approving the fact that the people are going to be on it the new the 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 new, the new applications that we just said we would consider aren't part of the resolution. Those numbers aren't there yet to add them. Uh, you could amend the resolution first and then appoint those additional members, unless I'm kind of where misunderstanding. Okay. Okay, so that's what we have to do. We have to amend the resolution to incorporate these new applications as potential uh, members. Would they be 13 and 14? Well, that's what we got to figure out. Okay. And look at their. They're all 13. Chair, for clarity, you, are you proposing to increase the number? To 37. Okay. I just wanted to know what you're saying. Uh, to well, consider sure. now. That's what Donovan's. So I, maybe I got this. So I would propose amending Exhibit A in the. Substitute resolution 2020-083 that came in at 6 p.m. to change the number. So membership will consist of 37 members as follows. And then where it says item 13, citizen criminal justice advocate, that five would change to a nine. And that would create space for these four applicants. I'll second it. Would it be nine or ten? I, I thought we had. It'd be nine. There's three in this one and one okay, here. If so I'm counting it right, I think. So. Okay, and you seconded. Mm -hmm. Discussion on that motion. Carolyn Boss. You no longer have an issue with the size of the committee. No, I, I'm probably not voting for increasing the size of the committee. Okay. Isn't that... I, I was no, that was me, but I'm, I'm like, yeah. okay, let's just... Yeah. You know. My vote was to allow all applicants to be considered. It wasn't to... Okay, but this is now amending it to be 37, and I guess I wanted to respect everyone's wishes, and so I'm wondering, you do oppose going to 37? I, I, abstain, from, I abstain from increasing it to 33. I'm probably going to abstain from increasing it to 37. I'm just getting you the motion that you need to get there. Yeah, well, right. so you also were opposed earlier. I was the only one opposed. But then I voted on the main motion because it's This like, is one thing we're not supposed to do. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's. Well, I'm trying to respect people. This is one opinions. thing they, they first teach you. Don't do that. In, <laughs> di in the dinosaur <laughs> school. Count votes until you vote. <laughs> let's vote. Crazy. Are we just creating something that's not going to be effective <laughs> with 37 members I'm, I'm a little concerned that that might be I don't know where 37 there's public input but then that's a lot of public input I just don't know where 37 is worse than 33 but any more discussion <laughs> <laughs> How many members are on there? No. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Who are the no's? Okay, so it's uh, it passes five to two. Now, got too big a now we're to the actual uh, appointment process. We have spots for everyone. Now? Uh, so I move to nominate all applicants to the categories that they have applied to. Appoint by acclamation. Acclamation. Um, point of order. Um, 
We do have one person who applied twice. So Arlene Feld applied to behavioral health and social service providers, and she applied to behavioral health advocates. So we do have one open I'm position, <laughs> or we could, I just, I'm just noticing that. We, yeah. She can't be in two places at once. That's okay, because we have five people from the task force instead of four, so. Excuse me, Barry, Council Member Buchanan, did you, you moved to amend this resolution, but I don't remember hearing a vote on the actual re amended resolution. Oh. I might have missed it, but. Madam I'll Clerk, move. I think Madam Clerk's correct. I'll move the amended resolution. Second. Discussion? Yes. So she, do we need to amend it again from 37 to 36? Because we had the one person that or, was counted twice, it appears. It would be an opening. Carol? But this is for us to take it to 33? Is that what we are agreeing? We did it in committee. <laughs> no, to 37, 37 now, okay. I got an idea. So I'll move, I will move to remove one um, position from the behavior health advocate. So that would leave just one position, the original one position. And so that would be um, that number 12 on our list. On the red. So I'm moving that we reduce that back to number one. And up there, right. And it's more like it was. We have a second to that Maybe motion. Because. Uh, so my, my copy has that at, depending on which document we have, the behavioral health social service providers is four on the yellow one. That came in at seven and it's two on the red one that came in at six. So we want to be. It's not the behavior health and social service providers. It's, un, it's the behavioral health advocate. Okay. And it's number 12 on the red copy. Okay, and then take that down to one. Take it to one. That's my motion. Yeah. Second. Okay. So before you all do that, you got to make sure because the 33 was from you adding 255. Mm -hmm. You didn't affect here. You, oh, you're saying hardly. Okay, I see where you're. All right. That makes sense. You okay. Good? Yep. Okay. okay. Any further discussion on the motion to amend? Seeing none. And it down to 36. To amend, yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Now we are to the point where we can select applicant. Now we can move. We can it's move. Now we got a main motion still. Yes. And Mr. Donovan has made that motion. I move the amended resolution. The red one. Second. Okay. The amended red one. <laughs> Which would be 36, right? Any discussion on that motion? One second. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah, Could we just, yeah I just okay. want to make sure that I read it over one more time and I know what we're voting on. <laughs> the. It adds up to 36. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. So. Now I move to accept all nominations in the relevant categories as they were received by acclamation. I'll second that. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously, and we're done with that thing. 
That's just the yeah, beginning. Just started. Okay. Have a task Congratulations, just everybody. To do these things. That are out there that applied. We're <clears throat> looking forward to working with you. Okay. The next item is a resolution. Uh, let's see. Money approve the approval of the request received from opioid litigation attorneys to send letters to sponsors of HB 2786. This is in the pink. Pink. There's a couple items in the pink, but it's the, uh, the last item on the pink. Do I have a motion? I'll move approval. Okay. Second. We'll Chair, I'm I think we can get a little. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to tell you, I actually emailed this letter to you at the end of last week. It uh, is concerning um, a committee that is um, being proposed to be established to determine um, how, if, uh, I'm sorry, I'm tired. It's been a long a day how the state um, uh, divvies up the money if it settles the opioid litigation and and the counties and cities in um, from our view in the litigation are are um, woefully underrepresented and so it's a letter to the representatives who are sponsoring the bill um, to uh, let them know that, that we think counties and cities should have more representation. So Karen, just so I have this in my head correctly, essentially the lawsuit's over, the funds have been issued back to the No, this, this, it's not okay. over, actually. Um, and I'm gonna- it, so, But the funds are gonna go back to the state and the state's deciding Potentially, right. you know, and they're not giving us as much money. Well, it, it, it isn't at that point, but okay. it's a committee to talk about where the money goes um, ultimately if money is recovered. And we're we're not at. There's no actual money on the table at this point. But this is an active bill where they're the states already deciding how they're going to proportion it out. That's the, that's the worry. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's, it's just who's on the committee that's okay. going to ultimately make that decision. And we're asking them essentially that we want the counties to be represented. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, we do have a motion. Did we get a second? Errol, second. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a, sec a second discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Next we have, oh good, more appointments. Easy. Council appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, the first one is an appointment to fill vacancy on the Lummi Island Ferry Advi Advisory Committee, or LIFAC. Applicant is Gregory Rice. Do I have a motion to uh, Move approval or move appointment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes 7-0. Next one is appointment to fill vacancies on the countywide flood control zone district advisory committee. The applicants are Steve Seymour, Jeff DeLong, and John Perry. And this is the council acting as the flood control zone district board of supervisors. I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Jeff DeYoung, another Dutch name. Oh, DeYoung. DeYoung. Just, just say DeJong. <laughs> just, just to clarify, we have three applicants and three vacancies, correct? Right. That was my understanding. Yeah. I, yes. Yep. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next one is appointments to fill vacancy on the Birch Bay Watershed and Aquatic Resources Management Advisory, or BB Warm. Uh, the committee applicant is Jackie Ben. What's Bergalt. that one? Bergalt. Bergalt. Okay. Bergalt. And this is the council acting as the flood control zone district board of supervisors. Do I have a motion? Move to appoint. Second. Do I have a motion and a second? Do I have a any discussion, Ms. Kirshner? Uh, did we get an email about where 
um, this applicant lives and possibly not living in the correct district for this appointment? I think I saw that this afternoon. Okay. You guys check the addresses, though, when they send them in to make sure they're in the right districts. Okay. Came through the council office, but... London District Court address. It's Lyndon. So if we find it, if we appoint her and find it later. I wonder if we just pull up their address real fast and throw it in Google and see. Does anyone? So, yeah, so if I could, a Birch Bay Watershed and Aquatic Reserve Management Advisory Board, there's one vacancy. The applicant must live within the district boundaries. Here it is. And uh, according to the application, her street address is 1624 Main Street in Linden. Yeah. So that's inside? Outside. Okay. Outside, yeah. But so, so I don't know if, if council would like to maybe wait and, and double check to verify the address location within BB Warm and take the action up at the next council meeting. So I will move to hold. Second. All those in favor to hold, say aye. 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 Opposed? That will be held. And that email was sent on Friday. On Friday. Mm -hmm. By Shannon Parsons. <coughs> uh, the next mm -hmm. item we have already done, that's the appointment to fill the stakeholder advisory committee. Uh, now we are at the executive appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Request confirmation of the executive's appointment of Douglas Cornelson to the Northwest Senior Services Board. Do I have a motion? Move to confirm. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next one is request confirmation of the executive's appointment of Daniel Sulak to the Marine Resources Committee. Move to confirm. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7-0. Next is introduction items. Do I have a motion to introduce? Move. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second to introduce. Uh, discussion? Can I ask a quick question? Yep. Um, item number four, notes from committee today say something about possibly having the hearing later than two weeks from now to allow time to notify property owners in the area. I don't, that wasn't a motion that was made. It was just a note from committee discussion today. So I just wanted to check on that before we introduce this. I, I, I think we were stressing the importance of ensuring that all of the surrounding property owners and community members were notified and knew that the auction was going to take place. And Steve made, said that they'd make sure that that was going to happen. So Okay, thank you. The, the, question I guess would be if that was driven by Councilmember Brown so whether or not that's sufficient or if he wants to hold for additional time well the actual the actual conversation was Mr. Oliver pointed out that it's up to the council to decide when the hearing is it's not up to the treasurer's office so I, I would move to introduce this but I'd, I'd like the hearing to be held preferably 90 days in the summertime when you know, most likely the property owners are all going to be around so second uh, I'm going to speak against that. Just 90 days in the summertime, I don't, that seems like that's when everyone's gone. It's usually spring when kids are in school, everyone's still around for the most part versus camping and vacation. So um, well, I can no, see pushing it out a little bit to ensure a little bit more time, but I, I'd be curious how much time they felt was sufficient um, and what would be a good time. But well, 90 days from now is in the middle of May. Time out. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm just being hopeful. He's from a different hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> winter time. In the middle of May in winter time. <laughs> okay, we have a, we have a motion to uh, set this hearing 90 days from 
today or yeah, roughly ninety days. From roughly, now. yeah, because yeah. it may not work. Wait, thirty, 30 days. Treasurer is asking for thirty days. Well, are you trying to go go vacation? May I? <laughs> I'd throw in a bid for sixty days. <laughs> I'll accept sixty. You'll accept sixty. I'll accept. I mean, as if, if you want to make me. If you want me to amend my motion, I will accept 60. Okay. How's that sound? He's okay. So, uh, Mr. Brown has accepted a friendly amendment to move it to 60 days. Does the second of the motion accept that? Second, yes. You do? Okay. Very good. Um, any more discussion on this, uh, what do you call this, an amendment to the introduction motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimously. Now to the introduction items themselves, all four of them. Uh, we do have a motion to introduce and a second discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7 0. Wowzers. Okay, committee reports. Natural Resources Committee. Natural Resources had a presentation by Dr. Emily Grayson today about the green crab uh, invasive species in Washington. And I encourage people, if you didn't get to be here at 9.30, um, kind of people had other stuff going on. Um, it, was, it was really interesting um, in, in, in terms of the potential threat to uh, commercial shellfish here. Um, and it was, I, it was kind of depressing as she's going through. It's like, oh, you know, these things, they take over entire ecosystems and they, you know, they can destroy fisheries. But then she got to the point where like, okay, but we're really at this early window where there's still time we can do eradication, removal, and they're actively doing that. What didn't come out too much in the presentation is, is that the removal they're doing out at Dungeness Spit is funded by, I, I want to say, um, WDFW or or the feds or something and it's just one jurisdiction here where like our big problem here is Drayton Harbor and Lummi Bay and there's all kinds of different jurisdictions and there's no money really right now for this so we, we got this great opportunity to try to get ahead of the thing um, which is the good news and the bad news is um, not the bad news but um, we really got to figure out who's going to be coordinating this and paying for it so it, it's it's a big issue uh, that was it but no action in committee Okay, anything else? No. Nope. Any other items from finance? Uh, the executive gave an update. Uh, it, they had a successful meeting down in Olympia. Uh, that went well last week. In addition to that, they are beginning the biennial budgeting process and have asked for our input on what items and what our priorities are moving forward. Uh, they're working on updating the AEDI um, kind of scoring model and have asked for input from the council on that as well. Uh, moving forward. In addition to that, there was a conversation uh, from John uh, Gargett regarding the Super Bowl flood and the amount of damage, which is roughly two to three million dollars so far, but we expect the number to continue to go up as more damage is being found, um, specifically related to roads. And then there was conversation about whether or not um, property owners who have been impacted by the flood and their property has been damaged by the flood, flood will pay a permitting fee of three or four hundred dollars in order to repair those properties and so um, we've asked that the executive's office ensure that if anyone comes in that would fall under that that we be notified so that we could adjust that um, and find another alternative solution if necessary so um, the other important conversation was that during this time a number of people ignored the road closure signage and they ended up getting stuck and that diverted a number of our emergency responders from situations in which they should have been addressing to go out and assist people and help them get out of an area that they should have never been in, in the first place and so there's discussion about whether or not we can pass along the fees that are incurred by getting them out when they break the law and go down a road that's closed um, or whether or not we could increase the permit or the the cost itself uh, um, as well so those can be considered at a later date okay thank you thank you next is uh public works and health committee yes like um council member kirshner said earlier and council member donovan we had an excellent presentation from liz Harmon craig uh, the whatcom county veterans program 
Um, I love that their goal is helping veterans financial to get financially independent. And um, last year, I guess they changed the eligibility standard to 60% area median income. And that, that this allows them to help a lot more of our veterans. And you know, there are things like the GI Bill. While the GI Bill um, pays for education for veterans, it also pays for their housing, but only while they're taking classes. So over you know, winter break or summer, they don't have that. So that's where we can step in, or the funding can step in. Also, um, the VA benefits don't cover dental, and that's another area where um, our Whatcom County Veterans Program helps people up to $2,000. You know, she was saying about they can get dentures or uh, work on their teeth. So just they do a lot of financial um, advising and our counseling and try to really get them financially independent. But they're doing, like you said, just great work. Thank you. Uh, next is Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee. We had an update from the Incarceration Prevention Reduction Task Force. Uh, they went over everything that was uh, kind of done in 2019. We talked kind of about what's next and what's priorities in 2020. Uh, we, we made some special uh, uh, comments about the uh, crisis stabilization facility and how we're still lacking funding and how that's really a very top priority of, of county government right now to try to get uh, the state to fund that ongoing uh, operational cost for that. Um, we also went over all of the uh, the various subcommittees on the on the uh, task force, <coughs> talked about what they had done in twenty or in twenty nineteen, and kind of what's their uh, vision for twenty twenty. Uh, it was a great presentation, and uh, look forward to the one in July, the full one. Next was uh, Special Committee of the Whole. The, we, the one item we had uh, that we haven't discussed so far tonight was we discussed a proposed interlocal agree agreement between Whatcom County and cities relating to interim procedures for amending the countywide planning policies. Uh, we had a presentation from Matt. Uh, it sounds like they reached a solution on uh, between the various jurisdiction at least for the interim procedures and so we did have a motion to accept that and it did pass uh, so that was it for special committee of the whole other items from council members we'll start down here mr donovan yeah i um i, I hate to honestly, i hate to bring this up but um when we did the uh new level of service mandatory garbage collection for point roberts a while ago we did, I, I, I do remember saying that we'd come back and look at it after a year, and I'm interested not, not necessarily in changing the mandatory nature of the collection, but the, the number of cans, that sort of level of service thing. So I, I, I think that is something we should maybe bring back to, I guess it was um, Public Works, um, that's where we were doing that. But, and we have new, new council members, but um, I, th I think it's that something we, uh, well, I don't want to move to say to put it in somebody else's committee, but I, I, I would move that um, we re-examine or we, we re-examine the number of cans that are required. And, and this is not making any promises that can anything but change because this is a require the UTC and the health department um, walking us through how this all pencils out. But um, I, I, I think we did, at least I remember saying that um, after a year or so, we'd come back and look at this. So. My motion would be we come back and look at the number of cans that are required to be collected. We have a second? Hey, second. Awesome. Uh, you can have it. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can both second it. All right. Then we'll be like the Incarceration Prevention Task Force. Um, so split it. So, um, yeah, and I was going to say the same thing. If we did tell them we'd review it, what exactly does a review look like? Because I don't know. And then uh, was it a land use ordinance that it was? Because if it was, we could do it through my planning and development committee if you wanted. It was health department. It was the health department. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to remind people, the council did not commit to making a review. Council members individually proposed that, so I don't feel that the council as a whole is obligated to undertake a review at this part. That, up, that said, it's up to the individual council members to decide what they want, but I wanted to be clear on the history. Um, 
we hear about it every week and the fifth district representative may hear about it even more than every week. Um, and I'll just say, I would like to hear from the provider as well. Uh, and not just the one side that we hear from all the time. I'd like, I would like a, 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 a thorough review, um, with more than one, one opinion. And, um, but again, I don't know what kind of processes we have in place to do that review. So I would be looking for help from my fellow council members on how we would do that. But I think it's pertinent. Crazy. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. What does a thorough review look like? I don't know if we can get help from Mr. Schroeder or not. What, what a thorough review would look like? Do we have any thoughts on that? Uh, Tyler Schroeder, no, not at this time. You know, if there is interest from a council to uh, have a committee meeting and discuss it in one of the committees, I'm sure uh, staff will be happy to come give history and background to the whole thing. There is a very long and extended and thorough history on the subject. And if that means service providers and members of the community come to that as well, I think we can have that conversation. Sometime in the near future or future, we need to move on from the, the conversation. And, and hopefully they'll give council a understanding of where we're at if changes need to be made, changes can be made, uh, but kind of moving forward as well. Mr. Ellenboss and Mr. Bird and Mr. Brown. With, with it being a, a new thing for the area and something that we don't do throughout the county, I think it, it behooves us to fully understand um, this new program that we have in place, especially when people feel like um, you know, a fee, a tax, whatever. Um, I, I think it would be, I think it would be helpful for, especially since some people did say we would review it. I, I, I wasn't here. I don't know if it was the council, but. It was individual. Okay. Well, I would support reviewing it. And I like the idea of having a committee meeting and inviting anyone who has an opinion, but specifically, I'm sure that the people who have been bringing it up will be there with their data, and I would like to hear from the, the provider as well, and any other community members that would like to weigh in. Yeah, it, uh, ben, I think this would be a good fit for your committee if, if you're up for it, that, that, would, that would work. Um, you don't think so? It was in public. Oh, okay, if Carol wants it, that it works too. That, that, that's fantastic. Um, as far as what a thorough review would look like, if we just kind of roll back to the very beginning of it, the question was from the service provider, the statement was essentially that they weren't generating enough revenue to stay in business and we needed to mandate a certain level in order for them to, to generate enough business and, and profitability to stay in business. And so in order for us to go back and adjust and, and consider one can, I think what we would be considering is if we reduced it from two to one, would they still be profitable? And would that be good enough or would they now no longer be profitable? I don't think we necessarily have to go beyond that. It could just be that simple. What are the financials for the last 12 months? How much garbage have you collected? If we reduce it, how much revenue would you generate? Is that enough money at this given point in time? And I would say, well, I very much disagree with the whole process and, and what took place beforehand. If the council was willing to come back and consider this one issue, I will make a commitment to make sure I only speak to the one issue and don't push outside of that for this time around um, because I would like to see us at least address that and get that taken care of if there's an opportunity there. So um, not to say I won't try to get the other thing back at some other point in time, but this, uh, this would be a great thing for us to do, I think. Brown, then Ms. Frazee. So, uh, for, those, for those council members who weren't here when we had the discussion, I'd encourage you to read the emails that we received from the constituents up there. Uh, at the last, I think just before the last vote, and if I remember correctly, it was like maybe four months ago, 
we received a significant number of emails, and the emails fell into the following categories. At least two-thirds of people said they were happy with the service. One-third said they weren't, and of the one-third third that they said they weren't, uh, I believe several of those emails from were from the same people. And of the other category was seasonal residents who lived in Canada who said they shouldn't have to pay for garbage service when they're not there. Although when I questioned several of them, I said, okay, so when you leave Canada on vacation, do you still pay garbage service? And they said, yeah, of course we do. So their expectation is for some reason that if they're not in the US, they don't pay garbage service. But if they're in, can if they're in Canada, they expect to continue to pay garbage service because there is a tremendous amount of fixed cost and infrastructure associated with providing garbage. I'm not in the garbage business, but I was in the recycling business for uh, recycling electronics for a while. Uh, it, it, well, uh, recycling consumer electronics. We, tr we went from our industrial specialty to trying to provide recycling of consumer electronics to everybody in Whatcom County. And we found it impossible to do it and make money because we're too far away from the next step in the process. And so uh, for, for this guy to even be willing to step up and provide garbage service for an area of, what, 2,000 residents, maybe? and then have to take the garbage and run it through two international borders to then take it down to the dump. I, I mean, I'm grateful for the guys there. I don't, I don't think it's appropriate for us to be turning around and saying, okay, we're gonna reopen the whole process. I, I, you know, let's give it a couple of years at least. And by the way, it's not our job, it's the UTC's job. They're the ones who've got the qualifications to make an evaluation as to whether what this guy is asking is reasonable or not. Ms. Frazee, then Mr. Ellenbach. Okay, um, I'd be willing to have a discussion in the Public Works and Health Committee. And if we do, if we could also, you know, the thorough, re thorough review, what that looks like, and also the relationship history, too, I think is important. I think we need to look at everything involved with this, um, with the garbage there, everything, yes, thorough. Mr. Ellenbach. I, I respect the council members opinions, but I would like to hear it from from the provider and from the people who who use it and I would appreciate it and if you would offer it in your committee, I think that's great and um, we don't need to make changes uh, unless there's a glaring error, but to let the people let the people explain their situation, we can move on from there. You know, just to try to clarify how I started this, and it's maybe falling off Mr. Bird, is it, it, my interest in, in terms of what I was hoping we'd look at was somewhat narrowly focused in, can you just do one can a month? You can do that in the city of Bellingham. Obviously, the scales of economy are much different there, but um, that's the kind of information that I'd, I'd hope to hear. And if, if other council members want to go in different directions, I might, I don't know how we can control that, but... Um, I'm not talking about reopening the whole idea of mandatory service and all that. Um, I did, but I, I think it's important to get a sense of, does it pencil out if you can do one can a month? And can, can we find that information? So but I, I don't think we can predict where this whole thing is going to go, but that's, that's what my interest was in this. So. Brown. Uh, perhaps in the interest of, of getting a really full and frank discussion about this, if the two council members that have just joined us, maybe to talk to Jeff Hedges of the county, because he's been dealing with this issue for years. And, and Jeff can give you all the data and all the feedback and um, provide you with a very comprehensive um, view that will at least give you, you know, if, you, if, you, if this is an issue you still want to pursue, you'll be armed with a, a, a good body of knowledge in which to base your questions, so. It was Todd that brought it up and I seconded, not them. No, I know that, but. But they haven't had, you know, this has been going on for a couple of years now. So, yeah. I said I'm afraid to bring this up when I started this, right? But, but apparently not afraid enough. <laughs> no, I think I, on the table. So. Any more discussion on... Schroeder, you look like you want to say something. I, I was just going to say, so Tyler Schroeder, if, if, if there's interest in the Public Safety and Health Committee, uh, you know, I can work with staff to get an agenda bill prepared, reach out to the 
provider and you know, I'm sure people in Point Roberts will hear about it. And in a few meetings, we can kind of give some background and some, some to, to the specific points that are being, being brought up today, if that's something of interest from the committee's chair. Okay, any further discussion? April 14th, Carol, we get a go. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no, uh, no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Passes six to one. I thought I heard Tyler vote yes, too. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any, uh, okay, other, other items? Other, 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 other. Yeah, um, I oh, sent it. Carol, oh, no, nope, sorry, I jumped no. Okay. Thanks, Go ahead, Tyler. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, I, I sent an email to the executive and, and Tyler last week uh, regarding a conversation that we had, I think the meeting before, about updating the budgeting document, not the budgeting, but the financial uh, request documents, such as our supplemental budget request form. Um, and I've asked that we add a couple lines to that. And so one of the things that we were talking about is how do we know when something might have to be bumped out of the budget because there's not enough room and when does that take place. Um, it occurred to me as I was thinking about it that as we go through the biennial budgeting process, we're really looking at all of the items and what the impact is once they're all fully spent to the fund reserve and how much is left at the end of the day. But when a supplemental item comes in, we look at the dollar amount, it, we never actually see what fund necessarily that's hitting and what the effect is gonna be on that fund and where it's gonna leave that fund. So as a starting point and something that we're discussing is adding um, possibly kind of what is the fund specifically that's listed, um, what is the fund balance going to be once all of the budgeted items that have contracted and approved have been spent, uh, what is the amount for the request, and then what will be the final budget after you, you incorporate the new request as well for the fund balance, and then having a line potentially for a reserve level. What is the target for the reserve level we want so we know and we can see clearly if we're getting to a point where it may push something out or it may start going beyond what that reserve level might be as well, so after everything's accounted for. Um, we've had some, the executives, uh, been very open and have we've had uh, some good conversations so please i just wanted to add that i did had informal discussion with uh, tyler uh, tyler bird on this because you know we run through like if you look at every council meeting there are about eight or ten or fifteen items of these contracts and things and if we have it on the contract sheet it's very cumbersome for each department head or or section head to go to finance and look for fund balances. And fund balance is not a public open information that everybody gets it. And we don't update it like one contract, you update that one contract, update that. I was suggesting that what we could do is that we can send a separate report to the council every quarter on the fund balances. Because, you know, tracking that, that you know, and these balances are quite uh, substantial amounts. And his concern, which I understood was that, are you, by writing contracts, are you lowering your fund balance? Yes, fund balance do go up and down because when we receive the money, if it is dedicated money to a certain fund, it goes up. But we write a contract, it goes down. So, but, we have a threshold on most of the funds we have that it should not go below that. And, and even if we get in that vicinity, we will raise that alarm to everybody, to ourselves as well. So I think my suggestion, our suggestion from the administration perspective is that we would, we would like to be as much transparent with the council as much you guys want. But if you want us to put it on every contract, it will be futile in many ways, and you will not get further ahead of knowing every two weeks what is going. That's why you employ the finance department, us, and you know, pay the mega bucks for all the staff to do this kind of work, right? 
and uh, and I, I see that your function of oversight is is uh, uh, well deserved, and and you wanted monthly balances. Maybe we can do something like that. Even that to me will be too much. You know, every two meetings you want to know what is the fund balance is. It, you know, so I think uh, you know reasonable thing. I would do that. That you know, idea is of transparency. Yes, but just putting on each contract is very difficult. It, it doesn't do the serve, uh, uh, achieve the goal you're trying to achieve. So my suggestion would be that uh, we will talk about with the finance department, will come up with a plan and uh, give us like uh, probably another two or four weeks and we can suggest that how we can inform the council timely manner what the fund balances are, if that's the purpose. Sure. Yeah, and just be safe. It's something I just wanted you all to know that I had asked for because it was something that we had talked about here a couple times. And the uh, originally, I think I had asked for it on like two or th well, two or three different forms. Um, and after our conversation, you you raised some very good points. I thought, and so. Um, I don't see it necessary on the contract form itself, especially because that becomes after the supplemental budget request. The, but I do think that it's important that it, the supplemental budget requests have these items because for me, I want us to be looking at that and understanding and I want an opportunity to raise a flag if something else, if it looks like something could be punted off of that because there's not enough revenue. And it's also a little bit of a checks and balances for me in the context of that. I really want to know that staff and department heads are considering what the impact of their budget requests are going to be to the fund. And if they're looking at that, then they should be able to easily put it on the supplemental budget request. And if they are saying they can't do that, then my concern is that they're not looking at it and we're spending money without knowing what the impact is. And so that raises another red flag for me. But I, I would be, and I, I'm happy we can continue this conversation later, but this is, I just wanted everyone else to know that that was on the table. And I yeah, no, those sense. discussions are really what I've been having with Brad Bennett, the finance manager, kind of looking at the, the quarterly financial report and the fund balances that are associated with that and then tying it to the supplemental budget requests and having that information in there. We'll refine it and keep working with you and, and, and find a good solution to it. It's a, it's a really good request. Yeah. Are there other items? Um, I just wanted to say a couple weeks ago I was praising our public works department for handling all the snow and today, tonight, I'm going to praise them for handling the floods. Yes. Um, they really worked hard and I think they deserve some kudos and some uh, pats on the back for helping us out. Um, uh, we talked earlier about the flood meeting in, at the Nooksack High School. There was quite a few people there um, affected by the flood or just live in the area. And there was, you know, quite a few elected officials and bureaucrats. Um, even though we were told that we weren't to discuss long-term solutions, including dredging of the river, let me tell you, every single person sitting in that seat wanted to talk about it. So I think it would behoove us to recognize that that is of uh, major concern to the people that live in districts three, four, and five. And um, we would probably be smart to um, heed what they have to say. Well, uh, let me actually start by just piggybacking on what Mr. Elmbas has said. Uh, one of the things that, that we'd asked to have put on the, um, I can't remember the name of the schedule, for, for planning to look for was the issue of doing uh, gravel mining of uplands, dry uplands gravel areas away from the river in, in the meander zone of where the river is, which is something we've stopped doing years ago. I mean, I, under I understood the reason why there was a, a ban on doing uh, gravel mining in the river itself, because that obviously would damage fish habitat but there's a lot of jurisdictions, and I've actually got photos of uh, aerial photos of Google Earth, where, and, and this is very common in Oregon, for example, they do gravel bar 
mining away from the river in an area where the meander zone might have been, say, 20 years ago, and it's probably got brush and trees on it. And when you do that, what happens is you create capacity for the water to go into that area later on, or for further gravel to be deposited and let the river run free. And I'm much more in favour of that than going and taking good productive farmland, digging a big hole in it, and letting it fill up with water, and then doing nothing else with it afterwards. So that's, you know, I hope when that issue comes up again that we can prompt some discussion on that. Uh, back before I was an elected official and I went to some of these flood ad, um, advisory meetings, I do know that in a couple of these meetings that I was at, there was a pilot project that was being worked on and it sounded to me like it was very close to completion. So I don't know whatever happened to that um, if it ever got brought forward, but I, it sounded like there was quite a bit of science that went on to... You mean a dredging project or a, a gravel project? Um, it, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty much what Rudd's talking about, removing sediment from the river, not from the channel, but uh, in a way in which fisheries would be okay with, you know, not disturbing... Um, I, I'm wondering destroying is this, habitat, but it it was there, and it was from what I understood, it was like this close to being ready. So I, I just I don't know what happened to it, where it went. Is this something we could add to our our water work session next week, yep. and get some get some staff there that would be able to talk to it? I already sent John and Paula. Yeah, uh, yeah, Paula was in those meetings. She would know exactly what I'm talking dude. about. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, I remember that when we did this mineral resources uh, discussion during the critical areas ordinance update, I think that was 2016 or 17 maybe. Uh, and this discussion did come up at that time, even with the uh, mineral resource uh, uh, people in that business. Now, one of the issue was that to go and mine the gravel even from the dry area of the river, you need Army Corps of Engineers permit. And sometimes the cost benefit analysis is that the amount of effort and permitting and everything, and there's not enough gravel to do that. It may sound for us that you are scavenging and, and getting some of the thing out, but financially it may not make sense for them to do that for two months or three months, right? So. That was another factor. I don't know the exact details, but I remember that uh, going in the boundaries of the river, even if it's a dry area, not the channel, it needs a federal act to work and maybe some tribal uh, involvement as well. So it was not worth for people to go through that process to get that permit. Trail and Boston, Mr. Brown? Um, so I, I grew up like a half mile from the Nooksack River, and as a kid, I used to play on the loaders that were parked down there as they were doing it. And when I say as a kid, I mean like the 90s, so it probably wasn't that long ago. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sure that it can be done, and these were all issues that Paula was well, well um, aware of, and and if I recall correctly, there was science that, you know, showed that it, it could help habitat if, if done right. And, um, you know, it may be a break-even proposition for, for the gravel company that's doing it, but if you add in the effects of lessening the severity of floods or, or you know, helping for a deeper channel in certain areas and the benefits to the fish that could be there. Maybe collectively it's a project worth pursuing. Um, but let me tell you, the folks in the audience sure felt like it was a project worth pursuing. Because I was sitting in the audience, so I didn't get a no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get an invite to the big table? <laughs> yeah, I just had that, um, I mean, I've got photos, aerial photos of the, uh, um, the facilities that are currently operating on the Willamette River in Oregon, and that would obviously be subject to the same federal rules. And I also believe that there is gravel bar mining in the middle of the Columbia River as well. Um, so 
there are there are other areas that are doing it. Now, I will be the first to say I don't know when the permits were issued, but um, I think it's certainly worth having a discussion because the other issue is that the Army Corps of Engineers, if, if we maintain the dikes, if we do our part in maintaining uh, the... Um, the dikes there, they're responsible. They, they end up having to pick up a huge cost, and if we can help reduce their costs, maybe that gets them, gets their attention a bit more. So, so with that, um, my update then. Have we finished on this? Sorry, have we finished on this discussion? I think so. Yeah, I could probably go on for hours well, about meeting. I think the we meeting, should take it I'm up done. in our water yeah. work session. Yeah. So my update is, as, uh, as the councils designate on the Washington State Association of Counties, I've been down to several of their meetings this year. Um, housing is the two, the, the two key issues that are getting the most attention down in Olympia appear to be housing and homelessness. Um, not surprising and uh, well-deserved, and well-deserved that they're focusing on it. I will say that there's, I think, approximately 90 bills on housing. Uh, that's the good news. The bad news is most of them appear to be revenue shift. Just we'll take money from this pocket and we'll put it in this pocket. And that doesn't fundamentally move the needle in my, my, my mind. My big concern with that is if you, if you for example, raise property taxes to um, fu provide funding for housing, which of those people who are right on the edge now get pushed off the edge because we've just raised the, the taxes? So. So the second category, so it'll be interesting to see which ones of those make it through. The second category is um, changes, basically changes to the Growth Management Act or proposed changes to the Growth Management Act or proposed changes to zoning. And I'll give you some ex examples. Uh, things like, uh, uh, and Mr. Schroeder, if you know differently, please don't hesitate to contradict me. But, you know, for example, I think there's a proposal to allow up to a fourplex in any single family uh, zoning area. So, you know, if you can build a single family home today, tomorrow, if the bills were to pass, then you could build up to a fourplex. Am I right? Yeah. So, the challenges with that, of course, are things like then who, because the counties are saying, okay, that's all well and good, but who pays for the cost of in upgrading the stormwater facilities, upgrading the water supply, maybe the septic or the sewerage system? parking issues and traffic. So I'm not opposing any of these, I'm just providing feedback as to what's on, on, on the agenda. So we'll see what makes it through. But um, you know, hopefully someone can come up with a good idea that allows us to lower the cost of housing without creating unintended consequences somewhere else. Hey, does anybody have any council member updates? Anything that they... We kind of... I, I updated and... I just given people yeah. an opportunity. Dana, with, with the presentation from HOK earlier today, would that be on the website for people if they want to see it or download it? <coughs> yes, we can place it on the Thank you. website. Um, I just have one last thing before we adjourn. That's don't forget the retreat next when, or next Tuesday at 1.15 in the council office conference room. Uh, that's it. We are adjourned. <laughs>